Lisa Wood, you have got to help me. Please help me. I am a photographer that went from film, which I had many cameras for that, then I went into this wonderful world of digital photography. I can't find my way through all this media and I hear you are the expert. You're going to help us through this maze of digital photography and how we should archive. Please help. What, what do I need to do? The number one thing is to try to get all the digital files in one place, which requires you to think about all the places that they could be. You definitely want to go back to all your cameras and look at your cameras and find, figure out if there are any files on those memory sticks or memory cards. And you need to pick a place where you're going to save, like it's, it's like the primary spot, the number one spot where you're going to save all the files together. Um, usually that's going to be like a laptop hard drive or a desktop hard drive. Usually a computer hard drive is where you have the space for that. And then when you're done with your cameras, there's also your phone. Don't forget all the photographs on your phone. If you have these, these are very portable, these are great, but they are also, these are the things you lose in your pockets that you lose in the bottom of backpacks. You, you really, you know, they're in the desk drawers. Look for all of these. And then you, not everybody has disc media, not everyone remembers CDRs and DVDRs that well, but a lot of us still have these around. It's not a bad idea to do some culling, to decide. You've identified where your photos are, you've saved them in one place, make some decisions about what's really, really important to keep long-term, because the more, the more photos that you have, the more work this is going to be. And then you want to look at, then you want to look at uh, like an organizational structure. And this does not have to be complicated. There should be, you know, one folder that's the, you know, on, on the hard drive, that's like the photographs folder, pictures, you know, however you want to identify it. And then within breaking down the photographs within the, the, the master file, uh, year is very common. So by date, yeah, I find that a lot more helpful to me than by subject. And I will tell you, I did subject for a long time and I realized that does not help me when you look at the totality of how many photographs. I like the date and the month and the year and then I can kind of zoom through. The idea is that this folder structure provides meaning. Just by opening up a folder, you know, you're going to see these are the photographs from 2018, all here in this folder. This is also a good time to double check what file formats you're saving your photos in. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking of future readability, you really want a file format that's widely used and can be read by lots of different software programs. For long-term preservation, uh, JPEGs are going to, they're, they're, for the foreseeable future, they're going to be readable by, by most of the picture viewing software that you know comes with computers and common cameras that we all use. The, the, the majority of non-professional purposes, JPEGs are going to be well suited for. What is your opinion about posting your photographs to the cloud for long-term storage as opposed to your computer or maybe a, uh, an outside drive? The cloud is a great option, um, but it shouldn't be, I have them on this computer and I have them in the cloud. Two would be the bare minimum number of places you wanted to have all your photos stored. Two, bare minimum. <laughs> would be, that would be the bare okay. minimum. You Ideally, you would also want to have your photos probably on a drive. Um, I mean, a drive with at least one or more terabytes of data is not particularly expensive. You will be able to back up years worth of family photos on here. But yeah, ideally you would have things on your computer on a drive, and then the cloud is nice. The reason that the cloud is a nice kind of third or fourth option for storing your photos is that it's not in your house. The cloud's a good like third, fourth piece in your storage. And I think the, the lesson learned is to keep up with technology just a little bit. Don't walk right. away from it and then right. try to come back into it to understand it. Keep up with it so that when you have to migrate, 
your CDs and your, your, your DVR media, you know what you're doing, right? You don't have to start from zero. Yeah, there's actually, there are recommendations for the time frame. You should probably look at your photos like once a year, um, you know, look at the drive, look at your master files, you know, you should be checking things at least annually. The point here is, is to reminisce and look at your pictures to some extent, but also to make sure that I can still open up these digital files. You really probably five to 10 years, depending on what's going on with the media, probably closer to five years, you will need to you know, get another drive and copy these to another drive. Lisa Wood, thank you for spending some time with us and inspiring us to get organized and spend some time with our own photographs. You are very welcome. This is a lot of fun to talk about. Honestly, there's a selfish reason for archivists to talk about this. We are, we are hoping that um, by trying to educate people about it, that in the future we will we will get digital images in the archives that we will be able to read and identify and back up in the archival system and, and use long term. We are more than happy to get the word out. Thank you so much. Thank you.